All right, so I got a bunch of maintenance parts, also a couple upgrade parts while I'm in there doing maintenance. Might as well just upgrade it while I'm in there so I don't have to do it twice. Um, for my Toyota Chaser, I'm also just gonna hit the oil. Really, I think I'm just gonna be focusing on some of the fuel components. It's the parts I have, but I'm gonna touch the oil while I'm at it, because might as well, why not? Mobile One 5W30 synthetic. Here, we got steering rack bushings made out of polyurethane. I got this on Amazon for $30. And I live in Tokyo, and uh, this was shipped from Boca Raton, Florida. But I actually got this in like three or four days. It was incredible shipping, super fast. Next, we got a fuel pump. This is a Walbro 255, it's like GSS something, something, something. Got this off of Amazon as well. Bought it for $105, free shipping, $10 in taxes. Uh, shipped really fast. Again, Amazon is insane with shipping. Considering I live in Tokyo, it's still very fast shipping. Comes with everything you need, like the little uh, filter pouch that's on the end of the fuel pump, a little wiring harness, a little tube, all that good stuff. It even comes with instructions. That's my cat, Takumi. There's Yoshi doing their thing. So, since I'm doing a fuel pump, I don't know when the last time the fuel filter was changed on this vehicle. You can see here's like part numbers. It's 23300-4605. Here it is on the side. This is the fuel filter for a Toyota Chaser, JZX100. Same thing for Crestas and Mark IIs, 90s. 100s and I think 110s most likely I'm not sure though about that the 110s. I don't see why it would be different Shit, this is what it looks like Very easy to install take out these two ends unbolt it Super simple. It's got part number it says Denso Toyota some writing there. You might not be able to see it So I heard that you can do the JZA 80 Supra fuel filter but it was just like speculations and rumors. I think I never found a solid answer. So I thought, fuck it, just go with OEM Chaser. I got this from my Toyota store, uh, the parts store in Tokyo. I live 10 minutes from it. They still make all the OEM Chaser parts. It's super awesome. I just go in, tell them the part number and they have it ready. Uh, this, so my boy Jerry gave this to me. And I'm just going to go ahead and install it since I'm there. I don't have a part number or anything for it. I don't know how much this costs brand new from Toyota. You can kind of see. I'm just working with one hand, so I'm not going to take it out. This is going to adjust your uh, headlight angle when you're driving at night. Uh, five is like all the way up, zero. You just scroll, it clicks, it's all the way down, pointing down to the street. I have this in my vehicle, but like the front bezel came off, so it kind of just... Like it just hangs there. It's not secured in place. So with this bezel, with this whole piece really, it's just gonna be super secure. It's gonna be awesome. Huge shout out to my boy, hooked it up for me. Let's see, I got oil filter also. Um, this is for 1JZ, GTE, DVTI. It's, it's for a lot of engines. It says it all right here, like two JZs. Fucking lots of stuff, lots of stuff. This is basically all Toyotas. Maybe five dollars at my local parts store or something. Uh, that's it for this. I have a lot more stuff coming ready right here, but I'm just gonna wait to install it. But yeah, thank you. I also did not get on video the installation of the IS300 polyurethane steering rack bushings. It was pretty easy. Definitely a two-man job. It's a lot easier if the vehicle's in the air, so you can just get on under it. Uh, my boys helped me out. We were all there just hanging out, talking, doing it. Definitely have some grease because this kit that I bought on Amazon did not have any grease on it. I just say have grease because it makes it easier to slide everything in. You can get everything kind of in there. It's going to stick out a little bit. But the end of the bolts that secure the steering rack to your vehicle, there is huge washers on mine and it just pushed everything in together when you tightened your steering rack down. 
I definitely recommend doing this upgrade. It feels incredible now, just driving. I already had new uh, inner and outer tie rods. That really helped. I had brand new OEM upper control arms. That also helped, but these these polyurethane bushings for the steering rack just changed everything and elevated it even more. Go on a, uh, not <laughs> Boom. Unplug that bitch. And then it's gonna die out because there's no fuel going to it. That was all the fuel on the lines, and then one more time. And then one more for good luck. Fire. Here, I'm undoing the connector to the fuel pump, and then I'm cranking over the engine a couple times. I'm doing this because I'm relieving the fuel pressure in the system inside the fuel pump in the fuel filter and in the lines of the rest of the engine you're going to crank over the engine a couple times the first time it's going to start up and then it's going to die because it's not getting any fuel sent to the engine i do it a couple extra times just for good luck there is an actual relay underneath the glove box which isn't all that difficult to get to i just didn't want to have to go through that hassle when all i could just do is unplug the fuel pump i was going to have to do it anyways That's a 14 and that's a 19. And just crack them. And do those. That's like a 10 or a 12 or some shit. So at this point, I stopped recording. I just wanted to go home. I wanted to get everything done. I did not get the removal of the stock fuel pump. And I did not get the installation of the Wabro fuel pump into my fuel tank. It's a very easy process. I'm going to be doing it again in a couple days on my boys jzx 100 chaser i want to make sure to videotape at that time i'll walk him through the process get another video show you guys everything super simple all you really do is the top line you just uh you get pliers and you push the little clamp back and you take that line off then this bottom line with the nut in it you're gonna want to get a uh, like a line wrench and then another i think it's 12 millimeter and then you're going to want the 14 millimeter wrench just over the other one. You're going to break them loose and you're going to keep going. You're going to have to do it a couple times. It's really in there. You need to use the line wrench so that way you don't round out that bolt because that's just going to suck if you break that. I started to strip it and I was kind of starting to get irritated, but my boy just said, hold up, I'm going to go get my tools. And he came back and he helped me out. Shout out to my boy Lash. I would have messed my stuff up had he not saved me. After you get those two lines off, there's a bunch of uh, Phillips head slash eight millimeter bolts that put the fuel pump bracket hanger to the actual fuel tank. What I did is I just used an eight mil and I zapped them all out with my electric tool. Super easy. There was like nothing holding them in there. Took those out. I put them in a little tray and then you kind of just finagle the bracket out. Uh, super it's 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 just tight that's all it is take that out take your old stuff off your old fuel pump and you're gonna put the Walbro in there you know get all the stuff on the Walbro, like the little fuel pouch the fuel filter pouch and then you're gonna have to wire in solder and use heat shrink don't use electrical tape it'll dissolve in the gas and it'll get all weird and gunky at the bottom of your gas tank you don't want that you're gonna use heat shrink so you're just gonna find the ground and the power. It's very simple. You're gonna immediately know which one is ground because it just attaches to the metal bracket. And the other one's obviously gonna be power. So you don't really need to use heat shrink. I just did it because why not? It's safe. Gas does not conduct electricity all that well. So you could, if you wanted to, you could just solder everything and leave exposed wire. I don't like doing that though. So I just heat shrinked it on there. Again, don't use electrical tape.